Hi, I'm Rich Stevenson. Tina, who is also a dentist, and the three of us are going to show you how to do something that's perplexed a lot of dentists for many, many years, and that's how to take an accurate centric relation record. We're essentially going to use a technique called the leaf gauge technique. This is a technique that's been around for a long time, probably, I think probably over 40 years now, 1973 or so, this technique was described by Long, and uh, it's essentially this, this fanned out set of leaves and each one of these leaves has a, a thickness that's approximately two tenths of a millimeter, about 200 microns. So about five of these equals a millimeter. Uh, that distance is not that critical. Uh, it is important maybe from a relative standpoint how many leaves does it take to capture a central relation record on a given patient typically relates to how much slide there is from their central relation position to their MIP position. One of the things that we're going to want to do is make sure that we get the rhythm of this down with the patient. And that requires doing some deprogramming or maybe some training of the patient when we get the bite. So I'm going to start with the entire stack of leaves. I always like to start with the entire stack just as a starting point and to get the patient to understand what it feels like to have their front teeth touch before their back teeth, which they may not feel that often. And then allow them to move their jaw forward and back several times, obtaining the pattern of what we're going to be doing as we go through this process. Okay, so uh, that will be the first step that we do. Okay, Tina, I'm going to go ahead and have you just relax back on the headrest there and get comfortable. And we're going to have you open for us and just place your teeth together on top of that pad. Now, if you don't mind just moving your jaw forward just a little bit and then move it back. And then give me at this point about a half hard bite a bite that would keep me from being able to pull these out. See, I can kind of pull it right, perfect. So that's the move, and open for us. So that's essentially what we're gonna be doing. And we're gonna be uh, reducing the leaves in thickness by just taking a stack off. And I typically just take, I take the half of the stack, and then I take half of the half, and I take half of that half, and so on, until I'm down to just a few leaves. It's a quick process. We can basically get through this deck of leaves in short order. One of the things you're gonna to have to do is set up some signals with the patient. One of the signals you wanna have is, are you feeling like a tooth is touching in the back? And if they do feel a tooth touch in the back, you want them to point to that tooth. So they're gonna use their right hand and they're gonna point up or down and they're gonna to try to pinpoint exactly where they feel the first point of contact. The first point of contact is centric occlusion, mm -hmm. centric occlusal contact. We used to talk about CR and CO. Now those terms are all been rearranged and kind of redesigned. It's kind of confusing. But the term CO really isn't used anymore for centric occlusion and helping all your teeth come together. That's MIP. The, the, the term centric occlusion refers to that first point of contact when the condyles are in their centric relation position and we are hinging into a closure pattern, that first point of contact would be your CO position. Is it possible to have your CR position come into a CO and the CO position is the same as MIP? Yes, of course it is. That happens rarely naturally, probably be 5% of the time or so. But when we're doing our full mouth rehabilitations or any time we're gonna open up our vertical dimension, we're definitely gonna to wanna to operate from a centric relation starting point. Even if the bite is acceptable, at their current position. When we open up the bite, we're gonna create them a new bite, and that new bite requires a, essentially a, a relationship that's stable, a centric relation, relationship. A leaf gauge is only good to deprogram patients that are deprogrammable. So sometimes patients are not readily deprogrammable. They're in a situation where they're experiencing some joint pain. They have muscle pain. They uh, maybe are parafunctioning and they don't feel like they have any one bite. And they'll tend to fight you and your CR record will be unsuccessful. So you have to realize that there is a group of patients that will definitely benefit from deprogramming prior to centric relation records. And rather than fight it, allow them to be deprogrammed, which may take up to one month, and then take your centric relation record. So let's go ahead on a deprogrammed patient. 
without any muscle soreness or pain, go ahead and take away that first stack of leaves. Okay, so now I've cut my leaves in half and my patient's comfortable. Some, some, some dentists like to have the patients leaning back a little bit further. Uh, they believe that it may be easier to have the patient leaning back because that's sort of the natural, the, the, the gravity is helping to hold the jaw, pull the jaw sort of in this back position. Maybe the patients feel more relaxed, but really you can get such a relation with your patient sitting upright, laying back any way you like. It's, it's a position that is not spatially alterable, really. It's sort of an actual position in three-dimensional space. You can be upside down and have centric relation. You know, kind of weird, but you could do it. All right, so let's have you go ahead and bite together for us. And so, Tina, I'm going to ask you the same questions every single time, and I'm not trying to be repetitious. I'm just trying to make sure that we're on the same page. We're, we're always looking to get the information we're looking for. So bite together. And slide forward for us, and back, and half hard bite, please. Any teeth touching? No. Open for us, and now we're gonna go ahead and take out another stack of leaves, okay? Open for us, bite together. And if I look in the back, you can see that none of her teeth are touching the back. You can see there's a lot of separation, and that's, that's great. But you would never wanna take a CR record at this position because she's too open. When we're taking central relation records, and by the way, I can just let this hold for a minute because it's going to help deprogram her a little bit. So when we're taking central relation records, it's really important to have the central relation record taken as close to as possible where their teeth are going to come together, yet have no teeth touch. So that's important. You want to take central relation. You don't want to take them with the with the jaws quite apart apart from each other. Okay. So and open for us, and we're going to take out a few more stacks. And open for me, bite together, and slide forward, slide back, half hard bite, half hard bite, and sque squeezing a little bit. The half hard bite uh, concept is that half hard bite is really close to the kind of bite you'd have when you swallow and when you're in CR. So it seems to be a nice way to describe to patients that, that how much muscle pressure should you put. It's important to do this because if you have them squeeze too hard, the vector of the leaf gauge between the upper and lower teeth will drive the mandible more distally and then you'll end up getting more of a retruded position rather than a true central relation position with the condyle centered in the bottom. And then open for us again, Tina. And, you know, Tina's got, I think, pretty uh, well equilibrated dentition, so she shouldn't have too many, too much of an interference. So slide forward, slide back, half hard bite, anything hitting there at all? And open for us. And we'll go down for a few more leaves. Now we're down to uh, really five leaves, so this could be as little as less than a millimeter. Bite together, slide forward, slide back, half hard bite. Anything touching at all there at all? See, you know the problem with Tina as a patient is Tina's my patient, so she, of course she's going to have a perfect MIP CR position, right? We would hope it's pretty close. So I'm now down to three leaves, and I'm going to go ahead and put those back into Tina, bite together, slide forward, slide back, half hard bite. Anything? <laughs> Open for me? Open again? Let's go down to one leaf to see if she's, you know, still human. Okay, bite together and slide forward, slide back, half hard bite. Squeeze a little bit. Ah, so Dr. Stevenson has a discrepancy he needs to work on. Okay, and open for us. Open right now. So at this position, I could do a bite register. I could take a, uh, excuse me, articulating paper like a mm -hmm. troll foil, one of the papers I think is really good for this. Insert it and have her bite down and go tap, tap, tap. Mm -hmm. And I would be able to recognize this first point of contact. Mm -hmm. So now I'm down to, it took me down to one leaf to get that first point of contact. So mm -hmm. Tina's CR position and her MIP position are probably pretty much the same. She doesn't have very much of a slide. I've actually taken CR records on some patients where half of the stack, they put half the stack in and they put their finger to their map, to their cheek and you're like, well, wait a second, I told you put it there when you feel something and they're going, and I have to add le leaves to actually find um, a position where they're not touching, which is kind of staggering how bad some of the central relation 
to MIP slides are in some of our patients. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead. These are pretty thin leaves. Every leaf, every system that's out there has a different thickness. I'm going to go ahead and put about, oh, let's just say maybe 10 leaves back in because I want to make sure that I have some room for the bite registration mm -hmm. material. And I'm going to go ahead and have Tina bite down on the leaves for us again and slide forward, slide back. And anything touching in the back at all? Nothing at all. And she's really good. And I, I look yeah. back between the teeth, you can see that there's about, you know, two millimeters to maybe two, three millimeters of space between the teeth. So that's just exactly what we want. So, Kimia, I'm going to have you hold this for us. Okay. Open for us, Tina. And we know that's the leaf that we want to use. And now we're going to use our bite registration. I'm utilizing uh, the product by Kettenbach called Futar Fast Set, but there's also Futar D. And Futar D is a much harder compound, the bite registration material, compared to Futar, this Futar Regular Fast Set. The, it's on a completely different hardness scale than this particular futar. This That's is on a scale A. This is on a scale A, whereas futar D is on a scale D of the shore hardness values, and it's much harder. Did my patient want to say something? Is that the pink one? That's the pink one exactly. <laughs> which the pink one is trimmable, and it's a great product. Okay. I know you wanted the pink one today, but I'm sorry, you're going to get the green. You're going to get the green. Now, what we like to have you do is I'm going to have you lean back pretty far and so that our cameraman here can get a little better shot of this, I'm going to get you up in the chair and then lean you back. Now, I'm going to have you open pretty wide and you're going to reveal all that beautiful gold work. Okay, open for us. Tip your head back a little bit. And the way we're going to do this is we're going to express the material onto the maxillary mm -hmm. teeth but we need to dry them first. You want to go ahead and dry them for me? So Kimmy is going to dry the teeth, and why do we want to dry the teeth? Drying the teeth allows us to get the material to stick to the teeth better, right? So we're not going to have the material dripping all over the place. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to just start in the back here, and I'm going to in, you know, place the, the bite registration material across the posterior teeth. And I'm going to do it again here on the other side. And then Kimmy is handing me the leaf gauge. And then Tina, you know what to do. Let's go ahead and bite on the leaf gauge. Slide forward, mm -hmm. slide back, slide back all the way. And half hard bite. And just have her hold right mm -hmm. there. And you notice I can't pull this out. Mm -hmm. She's holding enough to hold on to the leaf gauge. This is a great uh, stable situation for us. And I think kind of nice when you can see the bite registration material is definitely covering all the teeth on this side and over here on this side as well. And I don't necessarily have to have it come across in the front. Mm -hmm. Some people will take out the leaf gauge and they'll add a little bit more material so they have a single U shape for their um, mounting purposes, but you certainly can do it this way as well. I think it's easier to have them separate like this because you can trim them. Mm -hmm. It's important to have your patient rehearse this and then open for me. Okay, great. Open a little bit, and then can you bite down again into the material? Okay, that doesn't feel so bad, does it? Open for us again, and we're gonna go ahead and take out the little individual little bite records. And you know, if you look at the bite records, you can see that there's good coverage, and there isn't any areas where it's perforated through the teeth. The bite records, are covering uh, the second molars, first molars, second premolars, and first premolars, and maybe a little bit of the canines. These are going to be now needed to be trimmed before we can take the casts and mount them up. Mm -hmm. If you want to make sure that you've got a good centric relation record, go ahead and take a few of these. So there's the technique for taking a leaf gauge centric relation record. It doesn't take longer than probably a minute or two. And I find that this is something that you can do in your practice, not only for your CR mountings, but also when you have an unexplainable occlusal discrepancy somewhere that you can't find from having the patient bite down and slide in all different directions, you can have a leaf gauge check and find out where the first point of contact is. If you've just finished performing some dentistry and your patient is experiencing some discomfort with their occlusion on a new crown, for example, and when you check that crown in MIP, it's perfect. Mm -hmm. When you check it in lateral excursives, it's fine. 
canines are lifting off and the tooth is fine, yet the tooth is sore. It could be that they're having a, a discrepancy on that tooth from centrifugation into their MIP position. The leaf gauge is a quick way to find out if that is in fact the case. Great detective insights on how to maybe avoid an unnecessary referral to an endodontist or something like that when in fact it's an occlusal issue. So centric relation records, easy to take with this particular technique and thank you for spending a few minutes with us. Thanks, Kimmy. Thanks, Kimmy.